Hi, friends. I am Annie F. Downs. Let's read the Gospels. The Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the stories of Jesus Christ's life on earth, the friendships, the parables, the sacrifices, the meals, the miracles. Remember, there is a free reading plan for January, February, and March where we're doing this one chapter a day thing. You can get that free reading plan because I love checking stuff off, and I bet you do too. That's at AnnieFDowns.com slash Gospels. So here's how this works. I'm going to read one chapter to you today. You can listen or read along in your own Bible. And then I'll mention a verse that stood out to me, and then I'll pray. And that's it. And we'd love to hear what stood out to you. Those conversations are so fun. They're happening over on Instagram at Let's Read the Gospel. So be sure you're following there, chatting with your friends who are hearing the same chapter today. Today's January 18th, and I'll be reading John 18 from the New International Version. John 18. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said, and Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. "'You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you?' she asked Peter. He replied, "'I am not.' It was cold." and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, a rooster began to crow. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied, Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. 
In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. That is John 18 in the NIV. And what is standing out to me today is this conversation between Pilate and Jesus. I mean, I'm just, I want to see it, right? I want to see them talking back and forth. I mean, what an intimate conversation for Pilate to have. Really, probably one of the last people to speak to Jesus before his death. And it makes me ask questions. I don't have answers. It makes me ask questions like, how did this shape the rest of Pilate's life? How did it shape? As Pilate heard what happened, as Jesus resurrected, and that was the hubbub around Jerusalem, what did Pilate think and his wife? And so it's just one of those things where when someone has an interaction with Jesus, you have no idea what happens later. The same is true with you. When someone meets you and experiences God in you, no matter what the conversation is that happened that moment, you have no idea what happens later and how God could use that. Because we just don't know how God used that conversation with Jesus in Pilate's life. So I'm just going to be thinking about that for a while. Let's pray together. Jesus, I thank you that we are part of the work that you do in the lives of other people. And your conversation with Pilate makes me think of all these conversations I've had with people where, though I am not you, where I have gotten to talk about you. And then the conversation ends and I have no idea what happens in their life after that. So what we do know, Jesus, is that where you plant seeds, something grows. And so we just ask that in all the people's lives around us who, who we've gotten to tell about you, Even our friends listening right now, if they're listening and are new to hearing about the Gospels, that the seeds you're planting would grow. Their questions would be answered. Their thoughts would be made complete and that you would draw us all to yourself. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.